All right, uh, can you see the window and can you hear me? Is the stream working? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, great. So we're here with Immersive Arts, and uh, I couldn't get the sound routing to work correctly on this computer. So I'm just going to go off of the um, sound off the laptop so you'll be able to hear through the microphone that I'm talking into what's happening. Won't be the best sound quality, but it's since what we're doing here is talking about uh, uh, MIDI. Uh, we won't re really need to focus on the sound quality itself. Uh, so Immersive Arts is looking to do this kind of uh, installation where you have sensors that respond through MIDI uh, to uh, change things that are happening in Audula. So you could have like distance sensors, uh, you could have pressure sensors, you could have motion sensors, this kind of things. Now, what I, the, the topic of how to get these sensors into Audulus is something that's a little out of my scope. Um, one thing that I, th there's plenty of documentation out there about this, and what you'll need is something like an Arduino. Um, and it, what this acts as is kind of like an interface, a physical interface um, between in, uh, an interface between the digital world and the physical world. And there are lots of little like kind of pre-made things that uh, little pre-made projects on Arduino.com. Um, or CC or whatever it is, and you, it, it will show you how to use these little components inside of an Arduino and then have this little packet of code that turns it into a MIDI device. And that's what you need to do up until this point. You need to get your sensors turned into MIDI uh, so that they can come in through this node right here. And this is the keyboard node, and this is how MIDI enters Audulus. And does that, does that make sense, guys? Um, that you, you need to have these sensors, so you can buy little uh, distance sensors, uh, pressure sensors, uh, all, all knobs and things that people can interact with. And then they need to electrically connect inside of the Arduino, which is a little, uh, little kind of box that translates these signals into code that the computer can understand. And then there's a little program that you can write within it that then you plug into the computer and it basically looks at the Arduino device as if it were a keyboard, which is why we're going to use the keyboard node. And it will send pitch information and note on off information. You can also send, depending on how you have it set up, you can send information to knobs. And then you can do MIDI CCs, control changes. Um, and you can also have these uh, buttons. And then you could learn MIDI note. And then so if you had this sensor here and you had like a little pressure sensor that was just an on-off thing, say someone stepped on, you press learn MIDI note and you'd have it set up so that like this pressure sensor that you have is set up so that the computer is recognizing it as a keyboard. And you press learn MIDI note and then you press the sensor and then they will be uh, uh, matched up together. Is that making sense? Okay. Okay, cool. All right. And and w when we get off of the live stream, I can send you some links to go off of that will uh, help get you started in in this area. It's really simple and a lot of this stuff is just copy paste code that you can go from one thing to another. You don't need to know anything about coding um, to be able to do this kind of stuff. So uh, let's let's start by maybe one at a time you guys can describe what kind of art projects you want to do and then you know I'll uh, d just write what you want to do like in a little couple sentences and what kind of thing you, you you're hoping to do with Audulus. Uh, you know, do you want some? You want something to change over time, obviously, and I can go over that with LFOs uh, at first. Um, but you know, what's the? What are you imagining here that, that's going on? And while you while you write that up, I'll start just talking about 
the way this node works in general. So uh, it actually would probably help if I plugged in my keyboard, which I'll do right now. And so you can't see it here, but I've got a little keyboard that I'm plugging in. And that'll allow me to send MIDI into Audulus. And this keyboard will just stand in for uh, whatever sensors or things you have. Hyperrealistic cat sounds like, hey, Robert. Um, OK. So I'll go here to metering. The meter node just shows whatever number information is going on there. So that's like an on off. And because I have uh, velocity on this keyboard, the harder I press it, the higher the number goes, closer to one. And the softer, it's closer to zero. You can see this over time. Like this. And so you can imagine, say, so you have a pressure plate um, that is related to weight and that someone's stepping on. You could that pressure plate would have resistance. And the resistance is basically how, um, you know, if someone steps on it really hard, then you'd get a harder, taller gate like this. And you could have things respond in different ways depending on how hard or softly things are, are stepped on or bent or twisted. There are other things that like, uh, I don't know, I'm saying you have, uh, the, the, there are a special kind of resistor that resists more as you um, you flex it. I think they're just called flex resistors. Uh, and so you could have something where little balls are at the bottom and the flex sensors are there and then people move around and push the flex sensors and the flex sensors are, are adding resistance or not, you know, depending on that. So projects ideas. OK, OK. All right, so then I'll, I'll just go into a general, uh, just freeform explanation of like, like, say, like, what if I was coming up with an art project? Um, so, let's say I have a a distance sensor, and the distance sensor will will use uh, actually a probably a CC for that, and that stands for MIDI control change, and these are like little knobs. <clears throat> And I don't, do I have a, unfortunately, ooh, maybe, maybe if I turn on my push controller, I might have a CC here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay, so in MIDI, you have 127 steps. Uh, I thought this problem would happen. For some reason, the knobs on the push don't uh, register correctly with Modulus. Sign. Sign. Nope. Okay. Well, that's not going to be much use. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, here, here it is. You, you could build a keyboard that would, as you walk along, press different notes. And those different notes would give you different hertz values. That's right. So imagine you're walking along the floor and different plates have, are associated with different notes, right? And I'm walking up, 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 and down. And there are things you can do, obviously you could, you could have these play notes, gate versus, con, versus key, control on the left screen. Oh, 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 um, okay, yeah, sorry, I skipped over that really quickly. You go to MIDI. All your MIDI input right here will be from keyboard, trigger, and pitch bend. And the pitch bend node just outputs, if you have a pitch wheel or something assigned to the pitch wheel, you can add bend like that. And then it just centers back to zero. Like that. And then the trigger is just, the trigger is kind of like a, a single note. Uh, you can assign a single note to it. So I can learn this MIDI note. So every time I press the 174 right there, that's a uh, C, <laughs> C, D, F, an F right there, then uh, that, that will trigger that note. And then that is just like an on-off signal like this. And 
what you want to think about is like work about in conditions. Because obviously you could just, yeah, you, you, you can make these be nodes, but you can also have them trigger different events. So if I have, say, an oscillator, I go to VCO. I'm going to add a clock. And these are in the library. So these are, mo these are nodes. And they're what the modules are built out of. And these are more like synthesizer modules, whereas these are more like components that go into synthesizer modules. So I'm just going to real quickly build a little clock thing here. Let me go to math. And I'm going to build a sequencer here. And what, what, what I'm going to do is build up something that will just play a random series of notes when the, uh, you can, this imaginary floor plate is stepped on. So it's so on that F key, right? And then when I press this, this allows the clock signal to go through. Because right now, the clock signal is going 0, 1, 0, 1 over and over again. And it's being multiplied by 0. So we can have, see that, whoops, the output there. When that turns to 1, it basically allows this to pass through. And I'll add a little VCA here. And a VCA is a, a voltage-controlled amplifier. It is a way to. Uh, basically amplify your signal. So I, right now this, this oscillator is going on all the time. I'll get an input output. Output mono. And again, you're not going to hear the best sound quality because you're just going to hear it through my laptop speakers, but you can hear that oscillator noise there. And if I attach it to this clock, or whoops, like this, then when I press the F key, so this is this is an one instance of a conditional that you can set up. So the conditional is, if this floor plate is stepped on, then run this patch. So. You want to think about your art project in a way of setting up conditionals of like if, then. And so we could have something like a different condition set up in parallel with this one, where I'm going to unassign the note, and I'm going to assign a different note right there. So they're, they're on different notes right now. I'm pressing the keyboard. And I want to have something else happen, Some, something else like play on top of this right here. And it's getting a little complicated, but OK. Right here. So now. These two notes have to be pressed at the same time to um, pass the one signal here. So if we go value one. And so if one of them isn't being pressed, then it becomes a zero. So it only it will only happen if both of them are being pressed at the same time. So then I can have something here like just or I'm doing actually do a little add note here. I'm adding these two synthesizers together. There's basically two little synthesizers here, one and two above. This is the sequencer that plays the notes and let's actually we'll take the sequencer out of here and then have the hertz value 
I need a little converter here that converts Hertz into our linear pitch signal. So go to building, translation, uh, Hertz, and then Hertz to octave. That's again, if you go to library, building, translation, or yeah, translation, Hertz, Hertz to octave. Go Hertz to octave here. And this. Let me see here. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, did I have the keyboard down? What's going on? One of the great things about Audulous is like right here, I'm just kind of freewheeling and like figuring out what am I doing wrong. Oh, it's probably because it's set so low there. Come on the octave, yeah. Okay. There we go, I got to reassign these notes. Mini note, then mini note. So that's this one that I can attach to this one too. Oops. There we go. Okay, finally. I'm sorry, that was a little confusing. Uh, all right, so I set up a conditional where I can press this note and nothing happens. And I can press this note and just this happens, but if I press both of them at the same time, you get this one on top of that. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, so I'm, I'm using this kind of like a, uh, an AND gate, which means that both this and this have to be high or have to be turned on for this to work. And what this is right here is like, this, this statement right here is like, this pressure plate and this pressure plate have to be pressed at the same time to pass this clock signal to this envelope right here, which is turning on the volume of the synthesizer here. Okay, is it possible to use a computer keyboard as a MIDI device? Yes. Uh, right now, Audulous doesn't have musical typing in it, but there is uh, a way that you can have another app open up that basically turns the keyboard into a MIDI device and like a musical typing. If you just Google musical typing, there's probably a bunch of stuff that comes up, like musical typing program, Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever you're on and that will allow you to press the keyboard in there. And so in that way, you could have something like, uh, oh, you know, you could have, you could have something where uh, if you find the right program, you might be able to map every single key on the keyboard and you could have just like a keyboard setup, right? And you know, it's at a station at, that the, um, the, the participant at the art show comes up to and they can type things into it. And then you could set so that like right now when, if you pressed a certain key and a certain key would be um, a, a Hertz value, it would come out as a Hertz value uh, or you know, a note like this you could have them every time they press a letter, like a certain letter would do a certain thing, like, a, like the T would, would, would make this sound. And you could have people, I don't know, like I'm just off the top of my head, uh, y you know, someone's listening on their headphones and transcribing something that they're hearing and uh, everyone else gets to hear what the typing sounds like musically when the letters are translated into to sounds that kind of thing. So uh, that, that's a possible use of the MIDI keyboard. So you don't just have like a computer sitting there. You could just have uh, the keyboard there with a long cord going to the computer that's kind of out, out of sight. And then you could have also some kind of audio visual component to it that's reacting to the MIDI. So you could have another program uh, that is doing the, the visuals and you could send MIDI to that. 
Yeah, so, so you could have simultaneously the MIDI going to Audulous and to say like a visualizer program so that when you press the T key, and it, it will make this kind of visual thing happen. Uh, and then that will like sync up with ha what you're doing in Audulous. So that's, that's one example. Um, so this is basic conditionals. Again, it, both of these have to be pressed at the same time um, for this part to play. Now, another thing that is really useful in ORT installations, uh, and something that you know, I'd love to see if you know what. One of the things about art installations and about an art exhibit is that you tend to you go to it once, and then you see it, and then you're done. Like you you saw it, and you could come back on another day and kind of you know get deeper into it, but like it's not going to be the same as the first time you've seen it. Uh, but you could set your art installations up in a way where it can be different every single time someone comes in to see it and would encourage people to come back uh, for more than one visit. And the way you can do that in particular is with what's, what are called LFOs, or low frequency oscillators. And what they do is they change things over time. So let's see, what's a good example of this? Now I'm going to make an LFO from the library. And let me think. Let me think. LFO. I'm going to do triangle LFO. So a triangle LFO just goes up and down and up and down. Like this. And you could think of this, like this whole period is like a rising, falling action, like say over the course of a day, like here's 8 a.m., here's 12 p.m., and then 5, right? And you divide those up into hours, and you have to figure out what the period of the LFO is. So the period is from one end to another, right? So this from here to here is half a period, here to here half a period, so here to here is a whole period. Visualize inputs in Audulous. Some good programs that are best used to visualize inputs in Audulous. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by this. Can you elaborate a little bit? Um, VVV. Yeah. Uh, so okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep on this. Now, this this LFO is much too fast to be used as like an all-day installation thing, right? So, what I can do is I can figure out the frequency. Uh, I'm going to do a quick calculation on my phone to see, you know, how many uh, hertz per hour. Okay, so a period of one hour is equal to one thirty-six hundredth of hertz frequency. So one thirty-six hundred. I'm going to put it in my calculator, 3,600 times uh, 24 is 86,400. So here I am in the LFO, and I'm going to change the frequency here to just do 1 over 86,400, like that. And basically, the knob won't do anything now. And now, this LFO is running at a period of one day. So even though... It, I can zoom in here, and you won't really notice a change right here uh, while we're looking at it. It is actually, uh, actually, I don't know if it's climbing or, or decreasing, but it's, it's going in one way or the other. And what you can do is have that on a parameter, make an expression too, yeah. Just catching up in the comments here. Waveform note is good, yeah. Um, to make interesting creative coding generative art. Okay, yeah, yeah. So in the future with Audulous 4, you'll be able to have um, these uh, the, these things called shaders, and they'll have inputs, and they'll be directly in Audulous, and you can just like zoom zoom in on them, and you'll have interactive visualizations. But it, it's a field that I'm not 
terribly familiar with, to be honest, uh, a lot of the visualization software out there. What I do know is that there's a lot of free stuff out there. And I'm sure there's stuff out there that interacts with MIDI. Um, and I think there's even stuff on iOS that might do that too. Uh, not completely sure, but uh, the, the idea being that you could have a, a dual use thing where you have something that's controlling both sound and visualizations at the same time and you can sync them up, uh, like I was talking about before. Um, so what I could do here is, this is just a really quick example. And you know, if you want me to go into more depth with this kind of stuff, uh, I can. But so we have an algorithmically generated sequencer. And this is going to create um, random melodies over time. And have this clock going here. And then you're going to get pretty consistent results here. So I'm going to go here delete this. The, the idea being that like while the person is there in the, the exhibit, they're seeing it and, and maybe they get the sense of it in like a minute or two, like what it is. Uh, but then even towards the end of the exhibit, they could come back and by the time that they've seen everyone else's stuff and they circle back to the beginning, they pick the headphones up back on this thing and it's totally different than it was, even though they didn't notice it changing while they were listening to it. So those changes can happen uh, over time. So here we go. Let's make it a little more musical, so you can have a quantizer in here. It's that utility quantizer. Let's do gable quantizer. That's just snapping it to a scale there. And we can add an effect. So this is changing so slowly, it's basically straight down the middle. But watch what happens when, if I change it to here, it's going to change the way that this is reacting here. From my, from my understanding, uh, this particular module, and Robert, you can correct me if I'm wrong, over here this adds more randomness to the values as they're coming through, and then this kind of loops the last few of them over and over again. So, the, again, this is, this is just off the top of my head. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the artist. I, I, uh, I, I've never done a, a sound installation before, but just when I'm thinking about the way that Audulous could help um, change something over time. That's, re that's really what, what you're doing is you're making a system that can run uh, and do different things over the course uh, of the person's visit there or on different days. So again, if I go in here and I, I want to change that LFO, um, you just figure out you know, the, the hertz per hour, which, you know, or hertz per second, hertz per minute, whatever kind of um, a translation you want to type in. And it's actually great because you can go to either Wolfram Alpha uh, online or just Google it. You can, uh, that's what I did, just hertz per hour, and it came up as the uh, first result. Yeah. 
Always fun. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. There we go. So you're saying always, the, the completely random is in the middle here, and then this is repeating. So you can kind of get something that you like and then make it repeat uh, like that. So let me think. The, the really, the important thing when you're designing your exhibit is thinking about uh, your, your methods of synthesis, like what kind of sounds are you going to make? Uh, do you want something that's like traditionally musical, like something you'd have a little quantizer like this, where you have a little random melody that's playing through something? Or do you want something, you skip that, and you just, something that's kind of atonal and just different sounds uh, one after the other? And then the other part is the, what are you doing actually designing uh, the, the piece of art itself. What is it? Is it an object that someone can pick up and like uh, throw around in their hands? Is it something they walk through or walk on or walk under? Is it a whole room that they're in and you have distance sensors that all around the room, like you could have, for example, uh, like a circular room um, and in every, so many like an equidistant points around the room you have ultrasonic sensors and those sensors are uh, basically hooked up to um, n notes on a keyboard or a control change that's like on a knob right and so as someone walks towards another part of the room y you could have like say you know the the north corner of the room associated with this and then as someone walks closer to that this knob gets turned up and the sound gets more distorted. This. And then, you know, they, if they come back towards the center of the room, then the knob gets turned down. Uh, you, you could have someone, another sensor where it controls the octave. So like the farther away they get, the lower the octave goes and the closer, the higher the octave goes. Um, you know, one thing that popped into my head was about like a, like a chandelier or something that's hanging over something with, with these resistive strips and they have little metal balls on the end and so the balls give them a little weight at the end and when people move through them, they kind of flex and add resistance and then that would change the knob a little bit like this in different patches. So it's not um, re really designing the, the piece itself is, is just about half of the art. So you, you, you want to have something that's visually pleasing to look at. It's not just like, not necessarily just a computer sitting there like making noise. Like you want something that's kind of interactive and something you can move through as like a three-dimensional art piece or, or two-dimensional art piece that's projected on the wall, but something that's interactive. And so there's that aspect of it. And the, the cooler that that thing is, the less you can get away with knowing about synthesis. So like if you have a really cool interface, then you don't necessarily need to have the most amazing sounding patch, right? Because people will just be interested in uh, how they're interacting and creating these funny sounds, right? So if, if I were you, I'd focus more on how to create the unique um, kind of user experience in the art installation itself, rather than focusing on necessarily becoming a sound designer all of a sudden because you're artists, you know, becoming a sound designer and needing to have these like Hans Zimmer, like amazing flowing patches or, you know, uh, like any kind of, the, it doesn't need to be super musically complex to be interesting, especially since when, when you keep in mind, like, what do you want the person in the uh, yeah, pitch a loop that is playing in the background. To a loop that is playing in the background. Okay, yeah, yeah. So like a loop, this would be kind of a loop where you ha if you if you set this all the way, it, then it loops around, right? And then you have the loop going, or you can make a simpler sequencer and just have something like this. Whoops. You have an eight-step sequencer here. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna build a little translation module. So um, 
we go to utility and modulation. These are modulation sources and these are modulation attenuators. So if I go here, this, this actually translates this zero to one modulation signal right here. And that'll always go between here and here. That translates it into a wider range by multiplying it. I zoom in, you can see it's being multiplied by three and then you can offset it with negative numbers, so shift it down or shift it up, and then th this is what it sounds like. So basically this is controlling the range, so if you have it here, then there's a maximum range, so the maximum number of notes that you can access with one turn of a knob, and then if you set it uh, lower, then you have fewer notes that you have per knob. So, for example, you're talking about uh, changing the pitch, right? So you could have this sensor change the octave. Or you could have them change the range that they're playing over. So it's basically playing one note. And then this control is shifting, let me, let me add a quantizer here. I'm, I'm a fan of quantizers. This is another nice one. If you don't want to mess around with all of the notes and stuff, you can just do this and pick the scale that you want. And use that to pick the bass note. arranging them a little bit. So you could, this offset shifts the whole sequence up and down. And then compare that to So you can see how that uh, creates a sequence that's wider versus one that's just getting shifted up and down. You can even have, um, you can have a sensor attached to each of these notes so that you could say have a station, eight stations, this actually be a really cool, I, I, I could see this, this being really fun. You have, you know, in, uh, in a room, you have eight stations. You could just have a knob on each station or a pressure plate or something that they interact with that changes. Uh, like you could have a distance sensor, like you're talking about. You seem really interested in those. So you could have a, their hands being over this little pedestal and the higher that they raise them, the higher the note goes. And the lower, the closer to the sensor, the lower the note goes. And then everyone, you have eight people working together to create a sequence together. And it would sound, it, we can actually visualize what that would sound like if we have some uh, LFOs And let's just pretend they're raising their hands up and down. And some people are doing them faster and some of them are doing slower. This is, this is a nice way, if you want to create multiple modules, I want to create eight of these LFOs. So I just, I created one. Instead of navigating all the way through the menu again to get another one, I just copied and pasted it. And then I copied and pasted this two group. And I'm going to do that with the four. And I'm going to attach each of these to the note values here. like this, and this is simulating what it would be like if you had uh, people there and you had sensors attached to these notes here. And I'm gonna set their speeds all a little differently. This one's slow, this one's kinda fast. Slow, just as long as they're all not the same speed. 
and then you'd end up with a sequence that sounds like this. And you could even have, you know, another station here where someone's, whoops, sorry there, <laughs> changing the range. You have one person who's controlling where the sequence is getting shifted. So that, that, that's a way that someone could create, you know, the simple synthesizer here. Even, even without, you know, we can, we can gussy it up and, and make it sound a little better by adding a filter here. And a filter is just a kind of, uh, you, you'll I, I always tell everyone, you'll recognize what a filter does as soon as you hear it. Uh, it's basically, it, it filters out parts of the sound. It's sort of like a, uh, an equalizer like you have in your car. Uh, but this one is controlled by the envelope like this. I know that might be the loudest and the best, but you get you get going something like this, and you have all of these people contributing and changing. Like, say maybe there isn't there's two people who are not at a station there, and we'll turn these down a little bit. You have people coming together to create a sequence line together where each person is in charge of one of the notes. And it, it, it just, it encourages people to kind of move around and, and you know, work together in a way where it's not just a singular experience with someone and then you have these little moments where you're like, ooh, that, that sequence that we made was really cool together and, and we shared a moment together and that's what people really love when they're having group art experiences is this kind of uh, unreplicatable thing that happens in the spontane uh, spontaneousness of the moment. Yeah. So, uh, y you know, I, I could go on, but this is, this is essentially the thinking and stuff that I've done so far about how to use uh, the, you know, Audulous in, a, in, in an art setting, in, in, in sound design. Um, Obviously, you know, Audulous 4 comes around, you'll have more visual aspects that you can play with. Uh, there are quite, um, yeah, a light station up on this. Yes, okay, yeah, so um, right now, this is, it's a little complex, but basically right now there's no, audi there's no MIDI out in Audulous. So you can have MIDI come into Audulous through the knobs, buttons, uh, through the keyboard node, but you can't then send it on out into something. However, if you're already using something like an Arduino, it's already perfectly set up so that if you turn the knob uh, or, or, or have the light sensor, you have this light that's responding to the sensor itself and not necessarily to what you're doing in Audulous. So those two uh, operations are happening in parallel to one another. So you have one kind of tree that's sending the MIDI uh, from the sensor uh, to, it actually wouldn't even be MIDI at that point. It would be just like a, a number that, that's from one to 1024 or something. And that would set the light um, level of the light that's in the pedestal or something that you're on. And then you have another little wing of it that goes off to the side and that sends MIDI to Audulous. And so those two, those two, the light and the MIDI that's going to Audulous happen on parallel tracks, but happen simultaneously. So they, they seem like kind of a unified whole. Um, you know, if you wanna really dive deep and make your own Audulous type art project, like, like you, you, there are, I mean, you can see there's a lot of customization that can happen when you create things in Audulous. Um, 
And you know, there, if you want to get deeper into it, these are kinds of things you can do. I think you guys don't necessarily have a whole lot of time. Um, so uh, as far as from now until when the project happens, but there are, there are really beautiful things you can make with Audulus. So I'll just show you, for example, like this really beautiful insides to the things you can make. Um, go to matrix, Claudney sequencer. And this sequencer runs off of LFOs. And again, I, I really kind of skirted over. I, I didn't do like an introduction to Audulus. There are other videos that talk about all of these things and how to edit UI and you can move elements around like this. Um, you know, placing individual lights where you want them. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of other live streams I've done about that, so I didn't necessarily dive too deeply into that. Um, but here's a sequencer that runs off of an LFO. So you can see one sequence bouncing left to right, up to down, and then you have another one that's going this way. You do it faster, back and forth. And then when they collide, they create this other white sequence when they end up on the same step at the same time. And, you know, if we, what, what I wanted to show you about this in particular, though, is that, that if you open it up, you can see that Audulus has this really beautiful interface by itself, and it kind of reveals something to the user. So this is one of the sequencers. This is the X sequencer. This is the Y sequencer. And then I can go inside the sequencer. You can see that. You can see the actual the sequence, the moving up and down the screen like that. So you could make your art inside of Audulus as well, like this too. Oh, this, this actually shows up the node highlighting really well. Um, when you highlight a set or a group of nodes, it will dim all of the other connections that aren't connected to that. So as you can see, I'm highlighting some of the nodes and the wires that are associated with it kind of pop out in comparison. Like that. Okay. So uh, it, unless you guys have any other questions, I think I'll leave it there. It's, it's like I said, I, I'm not an artist myself. And I'm, I'm an, I appreciate art and I like art. I like good installation art. I like art that you can, uh, interact with and you know we go to a museum and you can touch the art rather than just kind of have it hanging there on the wall so I love being able to help you out and help that make that a reality um, but unless you have any specific questions this might be exhausting the kind of like possibilities the things that I'm thinking about you can do that basically you can set up conditionals like I was saying that where uh, one or more conditions have to be met oh I did skip over one thing so uh, if you want to say, there are these statements that you can make. So if x is greater than one, right? Well, let's see, x is greater than 0 0.5. And I'm gonna have this keyboard. And I'm using the gate here because the gate has velocity, remember? back to the waveform and right right here is 0 0.5 and I can set up a conditional that like this this thing will trigger something happening some event but it will only trigger when it's stepped on or pushed hard enough so you can kind of hear it when I push it hard enough it'll go but if I don't if I push it really softly it won't trigger this thing So that's another way to set up a conditional is with some math expressions. And you can go to the help section here and find out what are all the different um, expressions you can use. But you want to look for the logical operators. And they're usually, I mean, most of them you can just do with this, you know, like that. That's greater than or equal to. And if I want it to trigger only when it's in between 0 0.5 and 0 0.7, I could do. Well, let's do 0 0.8 just to be sure. So both of these expressions have to be true at the same time for them to pass. Remember, it's sort of like having the, the, the two buttons that we had where both of them had to be on at the same time. This is that same kind of uh, uh, arrangement. So, all right, that was right in between. But if I press it too hard, 
right there. <laughs> I, I have this kind of rubbery keyboard. It's not necessarily the best. So I, I just went a little higher than 0.8. So it's not, um, not triggering that right there. See, 0.82. 0.99, it won't trigger there, but if I do there, oh, 0.7, right? So you can string these together and make different conditionals uh, that will do different things. So you learn about conditionals, you learned about uh, uh, setting CCs from something like an Arduino, and, and you can change knobs on a sequencer setup like this. And what I'll actually do is I will uh, send to the immersive email about uh, the a couple like kind of starter patches that you can just open up and play with and little notes and suggestions of things to do. Um, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. Um, usually with stuff like that, there's like audio MIDI settings. It, sometimes it'll take to set up and usually if, if you're having trouble with whatever you download, uh, then you can uh, usually go on their website and there'll be like some kind of like how to how to set up with other programs. Yeah. Okay. So, any more questions? I'm really sorry this was a little late and I and I had such a trouble like figuring out how to get the sound in. And for the next live stream, I'll make sure that I have the sound working correctly. Uh, I just got this new interface and the settings that worked for the last live stream don't work for for this uh, for something. Okay, cool. All right. You're welcome, Jesse. Anyone else? Thanks, guys. Uh, we, you know, we could do another one of these at the time, and I'm definitely available. Uh, freestyle of something? Okay, well, let me see. Um, what, what I'll do is I'll leave this set up here, and this, this will act as the kind of uh, uh, faster line that's going over everything, but then I will set up a kind of pad that goes beneath it that changes slower. And that'll show me, uh, that'll give me an opportunity to show uh, the clock divider. So I get to library utility clock, clock divider. And I'll have this pulse every 16. Uh, well, not, well, let's do it 64, so. And I'll just copy and paste basically this entire synthesizer here. Pull this down and move these out of the way. And now these are going to be in the same key because I have them with the same quantizer settings here, but I can move these settings around. So I'll probably actually just pull this octave down. And I'll add a little quick mixer here. this instead. Connecting the 
clock divider here. I'm just setting the notes here. I'm gonna bring some drums in. I'm gonna go to sequencer, gate, pattern bank. Instruments, drum, kick. Probably not going to be able to hear that. <laughs> it's a little too bassy. Let's do it.
One last thing before I go, one thing I, I didn't mention that's actually really crucial in, in making kind of a fun pad, like if you have something like this laid out where you have a drum machine going and different patterns, uh, you'd want to maybe have something like a cueing thing, again with that conditional that I was talking about. So I could, uh, whoops, have multiply here. And then basically, only when this key is being pressed, learn MIDI note, so I'm gonna learn that. Only when this key is being pressed will the uh, signal pass. So I'm gonna turn that back up. Yeah, the, the music's coming from the, uh, the speakers and into the microphone. So there's no snare right now. Kind of builds tension. I'm gonna bring it in right now. And of course, you can also have it where you have the, it directly onto the snare sound so people could play it themselves. Uh, go ahead, Robert. A question about streaming with Audulus. Uh, you might have missed my explanation where I was saying how uh, today I, I couldn't figure out how to get the sound from Audulus in parallel with the microphone that I'm talking into. So what you're hearing now is actually just the, the room sound of the speakers. Um, so it, it was just because I, I got a new interface and all these settings that I had from my last interface didn't match up well with, with this new one. Uh, so I, uh, it was just kind of a last minute thing where I was like, oh no, <laughs> and then I was quickly reading manuals trying to figure out uh, how to get this to work and, and couldn't in time and figured, you know what, they, they just wanted to talk mostly about the MIDI and, and the con conceptual thing. We didn't necessarily need the, the best sound quality here. Yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll confer with this later. There's, there's some way to do this, I know. I've done it in the past, uh, and uh, I'll figure out how to do it so that we can both start doing some live streams. Uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, multi-device output. Um, right now, there's no support for aggregate devices for Audulous, and it's actually not a bug on Audulous' side. It's a bug on uh, Apple's side, and we filed that bug with them, and so whenever they fix it, uh, that stuff will, will fit. And yes, I do use OBS. Yeah. Can you see a little picture of me? I, I, I tried to put it up in the corner there. I hope I wasn't trying to do stuff that was underneath it. Um, I just tried to do that for a change so you can see my face. <laughs> so not just this voice behind everything. Cool. Cool, cool. All right. Um, well, I'd say join us on the Audulous Forum right now, and you can, but what you need to do if you're not already a member of the Audulous Forum is right now the Audulous Forum sign-up is down. So if you want to join the forum and check out the patches and download the stuff there, you'll have to email me at mark at and I'll write that right here. Mark at audulous.com. Email me there with your desired username, and I will set you up with account. I, you can still create a new account, but I have to do it manually for you. Uh, and in about a week, we'll be upgrading our forum uh, so that it's more uh, modern and, and can handle the new caption and stuff. So uh, it was just, it, we, we tried to update it, then it broke this other thing, so we have to kind of roll it back, and it is where it is right now, and it's fine, just get to me, and I will get, uh, get you signed up as soon as possible. Yeah, so. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Immersive, and we'd, we'll be really super excited to see what you, you have in store, and uh, just email me if you run into any walls or need any help uh, conceptually with what you're doing. Uh, and you know, it's more than happy to, to help you out with your, your projects. So thank you very much, guys, and I will talk to you soon. Excited to see what you come up with. Bye. Whoops. <laughs>